exile. So I spent the last uh, day and a half hopping on at random times just to see like what's on the trade. And I was able to pick up a new talisman. So this one has uh, increased spell damage and 13 to all attribute. So I got that. And uh, because I got that and it basically added in the stats that I would need that I'd be losing from taking off the one ring, I was able to put the new ring on. So now we got a couple extra points of Chaos Resist, some cast speed, uh, some maximum life, and then I had to replace the cold resistance that I lost from taking off the other ring. So I just enchanted that on. So now we got a net gain of a couple Chaos Resistance percentage points and some max life and cast speed. And over here we got flat uh, stat increases and more, tw more spell damage. So our damage went up a little bit. So we went up from about like 14,000 on Spark to 16.5. And, you know, Voltaxic Burst was at like 35,000, that's at 37. And then I also picked up this uh, unique shield. So this gives me 200 to life and 1,600 flat armor and 30% block chance. So we're going to get 4% more block chance. We're going to get about 1,200 and change more armor and you know, 170 more life than what was on it. So the only thing that we're going to be missing is the uh, the all elemental resistances. We're going to take a little bit of hit to those. So right now I'm at uh, 74, 81, and 81. So then we're going to be in like, we're going to be around 63 on fire resist and 70% on the cold and lightning, which is still okay, I think. I don't think that's going to kill me right now. I think it's worth it in exchange for the massive increase in armor. And uh, we're going to be losing the 45% increased armor and energy shield. But ag again, 45% increased armor and energy shield got me to 1446. So, you know, I had like, uh, I don't remember what the exact value was, but I think I had somewhere around 800 armor. And then when I upgraded my equipment plus the 45%, it ended up going to 1446. So... The, uh, the, the the actual huge flat increase in armor from the shield is going to more than make up for the loss of the 45%. So we're going to be higher on armor by a lot, and we're going to have more chance to block, and we're going to have more max health. And we're going to have uh, about, I mean, the percentages don't really add up the way that I think they do, but 21% increased spell damage. You know, it, it comes out to, like, about 2,000 more DPS flat value on my skills. So, it's something. And uh, our resistances will still be, they'll be okay. Now, I can get those back if I replace the chess piece. And there's plenty of chess pieces on PoE Trade that are four link that I can turn into a four link blue. And they have, you know, I can get Chaos Resist and you know, all resist or chaos resist and uh, fire if I just want to get the fire resist back up. Um, that's not the big issue. The big issue is that I need a chaos orb and I don't have a chaos orb because I used it. So I have no chaos orbs right now. So if I want to replace any more stuff, uh, I have to get a chaos orb. The other thing is like, I need to talk about PoE trade. All right. I've seen other people use it and it seemed like it's a really easy thing. Here's the problem that I have with PoE trade, okay? There's there's supposed to be an etiquette to this, and I've looked up, like, all right, what do you, like, what's the way you do it? Like, what's the right way you do it? I've even done it a couple times while I was streaming, like, again, getting some items in here uh, and whatnot. And the way I understand it is, if, if you're selling an item and somebody says, I want the item, you invite them to your party, you go to your hideout, they come to your hideout, you open up a trade, they accept it, and then you give them the item you check, and, and you do it that way. If you're the one that's buying, you send them a message saying, like, hey, I want to buy this item. And then they send you the invite to their party. And then you go to their hideout and then they, they invite you to trade. And what's happening to me is that I'll send out the message like, hey, I want to buy this item. And I won't even get I won't even get a whisper back saying like, 
one sack I'm in a dungeon or one you know I, I get nothing I get no response and then I wait a, like I, may, I wait a minute or two I send another message still nothing and then I'm like all right fuck it well I'll just find somebody else and then I go looking and I send somebody else an invite and then I get an invitation to join a party but it's the first person who never sent me a message so then it's like all right well I might as well just get the, the first item and then the second person sends me an invite and says, well, and says, hey, do you need this item still? And I'm like, well, no, because I just got the first item. And, and then they're mad. And then uh, sometimes they'll, they'll invite me into the and – they'll go to their hideout and they'll invite me and I'll go to their hideout. And then they won't send me a, a trade. And I feel like an asshole if I, if I send them the trade request because they're supposed to initiate all this stuff. Like, I, uh, you know, I go to my hideout. I invite you to my hideout. I send the trade request. So I don't, I don't want to violate any etiquette here. But I started like getting to the point where like I would send the trade request and then they would just cancel it and then like not say anything and I'd be like well I'd be like uh and then I'd send it again and then sometimes they'll accept it and then we trade the item and other times they just like like they just log off or whatever I'm like what the fuck so I've had some like weird instances with uh with PoE trade and it's actually like giving me social anxiety like it's actually it's it's like it's like getting it's like getting a cold call from a telemarketer. And, and like you're awkward and you kind of don't you don't like you don't want to be rude and just be like no fuck you stop calling me so you kind of like listen to their whole spiel and then and then you're just like I'm not interested and you hang up it's just like awkward it's just like an awkward interaction or you know like or if you're if you're applying for a job and you have to do like a phone interview before you get the the in-person interview and you're like answering all these questions and you're kind of nervous because you, you don't have the face to face so like so like if you crack a joke and it doesn't land it's because they they can't see your face and understand the concept and the context and like they're not even listen, really listening to what you're saying anyway. You just hear like you just hear typing in the background because they're just you know making notes or whatever and you don't know what they're saying and you can't read the room so you don't know if like if they seem to be impressed by what you're saying or what. It's just just dead air you know between you. So this this the the poe trade. It's like it's giving me anxiety. It's giving me anxiety. But I was glad that I at least got, like, I got this thing, and I got this thing, and <coughs> I was able to uh, sell a couple of the items in, in my stash that I had sitting here. And uh, But I just think, like, I, I, I just enjoy games so much more when you don't actually have to interact with people. That's why I love WoW Trade so much. Because WoW had the auction house, and people put their item on there, and if you put your item on there... People can just get it. It, it. You don't have to interact with anybody. They just they, they make it available. They put it on the market. It goes into the auction house. You lose access to the item, and then somebody buys it, and then you get the money in the mail. And that's I think that's a way better way of doing it instead of actually having to physically interact with another person that you don't know and expect them to not only uh you know act act accordingly like act decently be civil but also um to actually like respond to your messages or you know at least let you know if if they're busy and they can't sell you the item or whatever there's just <clears throat> there's just like no there's just like no consideration here it's it's either it's either they they respond right away and you do the deal and it's done or you have to like wait you have to wait for a, a certain amount of time and then you have to spam them with messages which seems rude and then sometimes they don't respond right away, but then they but they're they want to give you the thing, but then you know do I open a trade or do they open it? Who initiates what? And it's I don't know. I I fucking hate it. I just fucking hate it. I think it's stupid. So we got we got the shield, and it, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but like you know it's I think we're gonna be defensively better off. Our DPS has always been fine. We've been like melting bosses as long as we don't get one shot by anything. And uh, as far as resources like we have some stuff like I, i've seen a lot of items that you can buy with um orbs of fusing um orbs of alchemy orbs of binding regal orbs vault orbs i've seen some different currencies but but uh Okay, I'm getting to the point now where if I actually want to get something that's really good that I won't have to like think about upgrades for a while, I have to have uh, chaos orbs. We're like we're at that point, so we have to start like finishing or start like as we're playing through the game and and rares are dropping. I'm gonna have to start like putting together the sets again, so we can get some chaos orbs. And it, it's just like I don't know. It's the whole the whole process over the last like day and a half 
of like hopping on for half an hour or an hour and like looking at the poe trade and trying to find an item that i that's that's good that i can afford because I, I have the thing for it and then sending a message and then not getting a response and then looking for another person and not getting a response and then the, try the third person and then the first person responds but the third person doesn't and you know going to their hideout and then you know i'm having i'm having to like initiate the trade because they they just like stand there staring at me like and i'm like hello you know you you're the seller you're supposed to, you know that's what the trade etiquette says is that the seller is supposed to initiate all the shit and then you just provide the currency like it's, that's that's the way it goes and when it's flip flopped then you know you have to take the onus of responsibility of sending the invite or if you can't make it right away you let you send them a whisper saying like one second i'm i'll be right there i need to do something there's just no fucking people aren't following the etiquette they're not following the etiquette and it's causing me anxiety i don't like it so that's my rant on trade uh let's get into the game now we're in act nine i think i'm just going to focus on doing uh act nine stuff and and kind of ignoring all, all the other crap because once we level up i'll be able to put the shield on oh hold on i forgot my stuff's not on get my two golems out yeah, so our DPS went up by like ten thousand, looks like. Once all the once all the modifiers are active and and everything. So added ten thousand DPS. Cause I figured, you know, I either gotta do I either have to uh I figured I either have to update Update my, like, get better armor, you know, increase my armor, because my resistances were fine. It was just the fact that I was getting, like, hit and demolished in, like, two hits. So it's either a, a defensive issue where I need to uh, upgrade the armor and get something that's got a little bit more beef on it, or I just need to jack up my damage some more so I just instantaneously kill everything before it has a chance to kill me. So luckily I was able to kind of compromise and do a little bit of both where I'm, I'm going to be sacrificing a little bit of resistance, but in exchange I'm going to get a massive increase to my physical defense. I'm going to get a slightly higher chance to block. I'm going to be getting a nice flat life bonus. And I managed to replace my, uh, my ring. So, we got a couple more points of chaos, and uh, we got a little bit more cast speed, and a little bit more spell damage. So I think overall, it's a nice little upgrade. We'll have to see how it goes. Like right now, I feel like having having that shield on would be really nice right now, because whatever these guys are doing, as soon as they hit me, I lose all my energy shield, and I get a big chunk taken out of my health, and I don't. Not really sure like what I'm getting hit hit by. Okay, so we're not gonna do we're not doing one handed weapons. We will take armor and boots, we'll take gloves and a shield, and um, any one handed weapon. And we're not taking anything else. We're only we're only taking what we need to finish a set. And when once a set is done, then I'll start taking items to start working on it, another set. That way, my inventory doesn't get overloaded with like 15 pairs of gloves when I need like everything else. I don't need to. I'm not gonna try to stockpile stuff ahead of time. So I'm sure there are gonna be plenty of drops once we get past the story and we start doing maps and everything probably gonna ex start getting a lot of different loot so especially when we do like delve delve tends to drop a lot of loot but i think because 
Uh, I still don't really know what I'm doing, and I'm not super comfortable with, like, the league mechanics and whatnot. I'll probably try to, like, split the difference. Because, I, I mean, me personally, I kind of like Heist. I think that's probably, like, my favorite game mode because you don't really get a lot of great loot out of it. But you have the option of kind of, like, fighting your way out or just running past everything. And I have enough ability to run past things that I can kind of cheese it a little bit. And I think that's going to be good for me because I could go in and just take a couple items that I think are good and then just run past everything and get away. And I have a pretty reasonable chance of being successful at that. Uh, Delve drops a lot of items, but you, you kind of also have to deal with, like, you're kind of boxed into a certain area. If you go outside the area, the darkness kills you right away. You know, that the abyss... I uh, absolutely fucking hate the League mechanic. I think it's dog shit. But it's good if you can if you can win your, you know, round one, round two, and get a couple orbs out of it, it's worth it. But you need to stockpile, like, ten coins. Otherwise, you know, you're just wasting your time going in there doing one thing at a time. Because you have to travel to the Halls of the Dead, and then you have to kill yourself. And then you have to go around and talk to everybody. If you have, you know, go talk to uh, Navali to get your shitty guy. And then you got to go look at the rewards to see what match you want to do. And then once the match is done, then you have to go talk to everybody again and try to buy units and items. And it's just a lot of micromanagement. And I'm not really into that. I just want to kill shit, get my stuff, and go. <coughs> Excuse me. My mouth is very dry. Probably from all the talking I did. Actually, I think I'm gonna. Once I get to Highgate, I'm gonna go get a cup of water or something. Because I'm. I also streamed Baldur's Gate today for like four and a half hours, so. My throat's probably just a little bit dry. Oh, here we go. Basilisk acid and charthen powder. They're still alive. I'm glad to see it. Although I liked it better when they were over here so I could see her boobs better. Wait a minute, is she new? Man, look at the knockers on her. She's a little bit uh a little bit muscly. She's kinda of butch looking. I can't tell if it's a dude or a chick without the tits. Oh my god, look at that. Look at the model. Look at the fucking seam right there that you can wow, that's bad. Graphics in this game need to be overhauled a little bit, if you ask me. I mean it's been ten years. I think they should have I think they should touch up the game a little bit. Maybe redo the at least do the character models. Like the game itself, you can leave it alone, but go through all the a all the A-frame models and touch them up and make them look a little bit better. I mean, come on, man, it's 2023. Gotta do something. We gotta gotta you gotta make that look better. I mean, even Diablo three models look better than that. It's, Jesus fuck. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just going to put him right in the middle there. I don't give a, give a crap. All right, sell that. Life armor. I think I have one of these. I do. I'm surprised I remembered that. Very framey in, in the hub. The frames are like 
up and down and up and down and up and down. Let's go see if uh, no, the queen's not there and, and uh, the owl is gone. She must have died. Nico's still here though. Okay, I think I have. I think. Oh, I, fuck. I think I have one card that I can give to him. Because it was like a one for one, and it gives you like an alteration shard or something. No, it's not that one. One of one. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go get a cup of water and then we're going to start working on this area. All right. Got wet hands. Okay. So we need the acid and the powders, find the storm blade, find Oyun and save her from Kira. Do I remember Kira? Find the immortal syndicate fortification. All right, what was the way out of here? Was it down this way? Or do we actually have to go through the mine? The mine's closed. Whoa! That's how they get you. That's how they get you. When, when you get into the second half of the game, they just throw massive bobs at you, and that's how you die. It makes you feel like your makes you feel like your build sucks, but it's not really what it is. It's just they throw a hundred guys at you, and each one of them can potentially two shot you, because that's the way they designed it. And it just it, it forces you to play pussy, you know. It's just like you can't you can't just dive into groups and, and wipe them all out because you die right away. So you have to kite everything. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I don't give a fuck if I'm a glass cannon. I should still be able to dive into a big group of enemies and, and throw down my orb of storms and be able to stand there and spark a couple times before I die, instead of like shit like that where. You know, a fucking Moon Clan berserker guy smashes this thing one time and it takes off 75% of my health. Ooh, 28%. Uh... This could actually be good. This could be good. We're going to hang on to that. I'll throw quality on it before I, I roll it.
I think I got everything with three. I mean, I got, like, the remnant things, so I, I got, can I just, like, can I just detonate with three? Oh, God. Wow. Yo, what the fuck? There's, like, so much shit happening at the same time that it's, like, lagging my game crazy. Like, the frames. My game, like, stutters two times, and my character can't teleport away. It's just, like, crazy effects, stutter, stutter, dead. I got my... My Voltaxic Burst build is so powerful that it just breaks my game. Gives me crazy input lag, so I can't teleport. I mean, even Einer couldn't help me. Tragic. That's alright. You're gonna die. You're gonna die at some point. We'll take that, and uh, we're not going to take that one, though. So I think right now all I need is um, a weapon, or not a weapon, I need a helmet and the jewelry. To finish that set that I just got. Man, what the fuck? Why are these guys so tough? Oh, I didn't mean to pick that up. Like the rares all of a sudden are, are ridiculous. They're harder than the bosses. I don't see how anybody can do hardcore in this game. Like, I really don't understand how you... The only way I could see you being able to do hardcore in this game is if you just go tank build every time. Just make tank characters. Like, how the fuck are you going to be... How the fuck are you going to be a, a caster in hardcore when you get two-shot literally by everything? Like, how would how do you even build a character to survive that? Just doesn't seem possible. And especially if you're doing like hardcore solo self find, like the, how do, how the fuck do you expect to get any good shit from that? It's like it's just nuts. I don't have the patience for that either. I would not want to keep playing the game over and over again until I finally got the build that works. It's not fun for me. I don't like I don't like punching myself in the face. Like that's not doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. Actually, it's not even like punching yourself in the face. It's like punching yourself in the nuts. Like, oh, I, hey, you know what I'm going to do for the next three weeks? I'm just going to wake up every day and punch myself in the nuts over and over. Until eventually I punch myself in the nuts so many times that I can't feel it anymore when I punch myself in the nuts. And then uh, that's how I know I won. Because I just I don't feel the pain anymore. I've punched myself. I've punched myself numb. That's kind of what it's kind of what it's like. Basically torturing yourself. And for what? I mean, you might get some eyeballs on you, but very few people would actually be successful at it. I mean, I I, I just looked at the the Steam achievements to see like how many people have um how many people have like just gotten halfway through the campaign, like gotten to Dominus. I think only like 15% of people have have gotten to Dominus and killed them. So only like one one in six or one in seven people have actually bothered to play through the game long enough to like beat the first four acts. That's not good. It's not good. That's not. That's not the kind of uh, difficulty and um, difficult. That's not the kind of difficulty curve that I'd want in my games. I mean, I, I don't I don't have any problem with people making hard games. It's just when you make them when you make them inaccessible, like when you don't give the player enough tools to actually like figure out ways to 
get around the difficulty. When it's just like, here's the difficulty, take it or leave it. And we're not going to give you any, any, you know, any good ways to um, kind of prepare yourself for the shit that's coming ahead. It's not, so that's not good game design. I mean, can you imagine if they did that in Dark Souls where just like the core experience was like, okay, um, we're going to give you better loot, but you're never going to be able to level up your character. So you're always, it's going to be SL1 and you're never going to be able to have more than like 20 strength or 20 dex or 20 intelligence. So you'll have enough, you'll have just enough stats that you can use the majority of skills in the game but you're never going to be able to level beyond that so the only way you're going to get stronger is by more gear and in order to get that gear you're going to have to kill like insanely hard bosses at a disadvantage that's that's what i would equate that to and considering how many people get frustrated with like souls games just in general like normal difficulty souls games can be very difficult for new players or even like veteran players. Like I, I know if I'm playing, if I play like something like Elden Ring, I, I don't, I can't play that game regularly anymore. I just can't do it. I, I only, I play it with mods and I make sure that I, I just like, I start at level 150. That way, every time I get better equipment, I can immediately use it. Because I don't, I don't enjoy the process of grinding my way up until the point where I feel like I'm strong enough that the content is fair. I, I just hate that feeling. I hate the feeling that you're just always at a disadvantage. Which I need to, if I'm going to keep this stuff, I need to actually put it over here, so. Where the fuck is the way out? Is that bridge? Maybe I should amend my, my previous statement. Doing hardcore solo cell found in this game isn't like playing isn't like playing Elden Ring SL1. It's like playing Elden Ring with a randomizer at SL1. That's exactly what it's like. So not only do you have and I'm talking like randomized enemies and randomized loot. So you don't even have the benefit of knowing when you're gonna you know, like you don't have the benefit of like static loot positions so you can't even say like well I've learned Elden Ring to the point where I know if I go to this dungeon and I kill this boss I'm going to get this item which any character can use at level 1 and if I two hand it then it's going to have this much attack and as long as I get the upgrades for it I can upgrade it to plus 10 and that'll be strong enough to get me through 75% of the game before I really start to struggle you don't even have that luxury you have to just like completely suffer and try to put together some some build out of hot garbage and then try to beat the game like that I can't imagine how long it would take like even the best player in the world would probably say fuck this shit it's just too hard
Plus, I, I don't, I don't enjoy that. I, I like the power fantasy. I like when my character is stronger than the content. So if the game doesn't do enough to give me that feeling at some point, then I have to cheat. I have to cheat, and I have no shame in admitting it. Like I play, I play like. I I just got the convergence mod for Elden Ring, and I'm pretty sure that when I play it, I'm just gonna cheat engine and give myself like level 150 because I know for a fact that they messed with the scaling. So even if you're like level 500 and you have your stats up all the way, the the way they changed all the gear and made it like percentage based. So like if you have, um, if you have like a full set of the same armor on you'll get like a 50 percent bonus to your spell damage which is an insane amount but then you're stuck wearing that armor and you can't ever wear anything different so fashion souls goes out the window and i don't like that either i think all armor anything that's cosmetic i think cosmetic shit should all more or less be equal to each other there should be parity there it's when it's the weapons and the spells where you know Increases and decreases should come into play. Or just have everything be based off the stats that you level up. So regardless of whatever, whatever regardless of what you're using, depending on how you level up your stats, that should affect the things that you're using. Like, like if I was going to make a, a, a Souls game, I would have it be where like if you increased your dex, you also increased your cast speed. So even if your spell didn't do a ton of damage, it would come out really fast, so that way you'd be able to get a couple hits in and then get away. Same as like, like basically turn your spells and your weapons into like the same thing. So regardless of whether you're attacking with physical damage or you're attacking with, a, with an element or some, or some different damage type, you're always able to get your hits out really quick. And then if you're actually like pure spellcaster and you do like intelligence, which is like the sorcerer thing, then obviously, you know, like if you do intelligence, then then like maybe that should be tied to your mana. So then you get more mana and then you don't actually have to level up the uh, the FP stat. You don't have to level that up. Because it should be, it'll be built into intelligence. So n intelligence will not only make sorcery spells hit harder, but you just get flat mana boost, so you can cast more spells. And then if you did faith, even if you were even if you were a sorcerer, if you did faith, maybe faith would like uh, I don't know, like increase the potency, so you do more damage. Like, every, every individual stat would be tied to some aspect of the game. So you didn't actually have to have, like, a separate stat for your stamina, a separate stat for your, your mana, and all that kind of stuff. It should just be tied in with certain stats. So every everything would do, like, two things. Like, yes, this is the stat requirement that you need to, in order to be able to use this item. But beyond that, it's also going to give you this this bonus, you know? Like I think the way they have it is like Dex. Dex is Dex is cast speed, which I agree with, but it stops at a certain point. Why does it stop? I don't understand why it stops. It should go all the way to ninety nine. That's another thing I don't like. It's like the soft cap and the hard cap. Why do you have a cap that fucking sixty when it goes to ninety nine? Should stop at ninety nine. And if you're gonna put like a two-hand bonus in for strength, then that should count even when you're at 99. It should be 99 times 1.5, not 66 times 1.5 to give you the same amount of attack power that you'd have if you just wielded at one-handed at 99. It's dumb. doesn't make any sense. If you have 99 strength, you're stronger than somebody that has 66 strength, even if they're two-handing. It's 99 strength. Your innate strength is 99. It's higher number, so you should do more damage. Doesn't. It's just fucking stupid. I mean, if they're going to do that shit, why don't they just cap it at 50? Like, why even have 99 as a as a stat cap if you're going to 
put soft caps and hard caps at like 40 and 60, why don't you just cap it at 50? So 50 is the maximum number that you can get. Have 10 different stats so that you can get a maximum level of 500 and then scale the game so that way, you know, maybe by the time you, f you, you can do like new game, new game plus, and then one level beyond that, which would be like the max level. So then you have three playthroughs and by the end of the three playthroughs, you'd be at level 500 and you'd be doing the hardest content. So you don't have to do like new game, new game one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then and have like nine separate playthroughs when, you know, with a really slow exponential curve, they could just have three separate difficulties with the understanding that every time you start a new difficulty, it'll be like starting over at level one, but you'll have the advantage of more, you know, you get to keep all your gear, so you'll have more abilities to mix and match for the things that you're fighting against, so you'll have that advantage. That makes way more sense to me than the way that they do it. I'm not trying to say it's like bad the way they do it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like what's the point of having a game that's like really hard the first time you play through it, but then the second time you play through it, it's really easy because you can over level in the first playthrough. So the second playthrough ends up being really easy, but then by the time you get to the third playthrough it's kind of like starting over again because everything has scaled to the point where your damage and your stats don't keep up anymore, but then it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder and harder, but you never get any stronger and stronger, so there's no way for you to ever catch back up, and then it gets to the point where everything everything in the game, including shit enemies, kills you in one hit, so then you're basically doing a no-hit run, and that to me, that's not any fun, unless you're actually like trying to impress everybody with your dedication, but that's, you know... I, You'd be better off just... Ha I don't know why they don't just have, like, different game modes. To me, that would just make more sense. Like, alright, the new FromSoft game, it's going to have, like, a normal mode where you play through the game normally and you start with nothing and you go from, like, level 0 to 150 or whatever. And then we're going to have a separate game mode, which is a randomizer mode where everything's random. And then we're going to have a separate mode on top of that, which is, like, no hit, no hit mode. Like, everything kills you in one hit, so then you don't actually have to, like just pretend that um, like you don't actually have to play it honorably and start over yourself every time you die because when you die in one hit mode it'll just literally send you back to the main menu so you don't have a choice in the matter like that that, that kind of shit is like very easy to program on the same engine so the fact that they never do it and they never make it available as like DLC or free updates or anything like that just shows that they're fucking lazy Like how many games have they made? They made Dark. They made Dark Souls. Dark Souls, the one that we don't talk about. They made Dark Souls Three. They made Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Elden Ring. And so, in six games, they haven't figured out that the modding community has better ideas than they do, and they don't just like you know contact the modders and say, "Hey, we really like your idea and and the things that you put in the game. Can we take it and incorporate it as from soft assets so when we make the next game, we can put this stuff in it or these ideas that you came up with or these mechanics that you came up with. So we really like them. We'd like to use them and adjust them and then put them in the next game and have them be official releases since we have millions and millions of dollars to put behind it and we can make it better than a a modder who just does it on his weekend when he's not working at Pizza Hut like just like fucking Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, 40% increased armor and energy shield. That automatically makes it better than this. Just that right there. Max mana cold resist. So I could, I could probably enchant this for the fire and lightning resist, probably. And that would take care of that problem. But that's actually pretty solid. And it has 258 armor on it. So that actually that actually rolled into a perfect item. If I had put quality on it, it probably would have got better max rolls. But 40%, but that's pretty good. So that's actually an upgrade right there. Solid. It's a solid upgrade. 
I just need to chromatic to get those three blues. Uh, let me just reorder this stuff. So we're going to put that there. We're going to put that over here because we're going to try to roll that. I mean, I looked it up and... Or, I mean, I checked the PoE trade, and there were zero items. Zero items that had critical strike chance for spells. So this that must be an extremely rare modifier. And I re-enchanted it, so instead of having like 1 to 30 lightning damage as an enchant, I did 5 to 79, and there's a tier 3. I have the tier 3, but I, I don't have the items for it to do it. But it can go up even higher to like 5 to 120 or something like that. So that's another, I could just re-enchant it. But basically every, um, every weapon that we have that has a spell damage prefix on it, we're basically rolling it. And if it doesn't have the spell crit on it, we're not using it. Because if it, if it at least has the spell crit on it, then I can put, I can add the lightning damage on myself. And if the spell damage modifier is high enough, then chances are if it rolls with more spell damage, it's going to match the first one. So that's going to be an automatic upgrade right there. I mean, if we rolled this and it had spell damage crit, spell crit, and um, even shitty lightning, even if it, if it had shitty light, I mean, if it had good lightning, that'd be great. But if it had any kind of lightning, added lightning damage on it, that'd be good. Uh, so then these are going to be... That's for me, and then this is for the box. And then those are going to get sold. I think I should have found a waypoint by now. Kind of surprised I didn't. Let me actually like go. Oh wait, I remember this place. I fucking hated this place. I just kept like running around in circles, and there was shit. There was something here that kept killing me. I was like, I died a lot here. Last time I was in this place. Okay, and that one's here. That one's in the next spot. That one's also here. That one's in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there was a waypoint there, and I missed it. There's definitely going to be one here, though, because this is a, a fork area. So probably on the other side or in the middle somewhere, I'll find it. So when I, so we'll just go until we find that waypoint, and then we'll head back to town. Yeah, I remember now. You got to kill the guy to unlock the seal and then go in and... Wow, that guy fucking hurts. Holy shit. Yo, what the fuck, man? Why do they have so much health? Where's the, where's the rare guy at? It's disappeared. I think the ballista's hit me. I think that's what's doing all the damage. It's not him. How do I get in there? 
Do I just have to keep going, guys? Is like a X X number of guys, like a flat number of guys. Uh, always hoped I'd get a warrior's death. <laughs> Banking currency winnings? What? Leo imprisoned for three turns, plus three fortification intelligence per turn. What is this? Execute plus one rank to Leo. Release. What the fuck? Release the target. You will gain no intelligence and there will be no change to the syndicate. Execute. Minus one rank on release. Uh... Oh wait, I think did I upgrade my belt too? No, I didn't. I was looking at a another belt. It was a rare belt. I had a bunch of good shit on it, but I couldn't afford it. So belt and chest piece, if I get like two chaos orbs I might be able to get stuff. Uh Okay. The victor claims their prize, and the slaves want to claim. I will tell you what you want to know. Exchange for exchange for my safety. So you're a snitch. Fuck you. Interrogate. He's a snitch. I wanted to execute him. To be honest. Betrayal. Interrogate syndicate members to gain intelligence about their division safe house. When a bar hits 100, raid that safe house. So there's a difference between interrogating somebody and just having them snitch and just tell you the information up front. At least if you interrogate them, then they're being like mentally tortured. You know, they're being coerced. It's not just freely given information. We don't want that. We want to earn it. Ooh, we're so close. We definitely need that armor boost. That's for sure. Uh, all right. I'll throw some stuff in the box. The map put over here. Oh, wait, hold on. This is, uh, I think this was all the boot crappy stuff that I had set up before, right? So we got our weapon, and we got that. So we just need... We have boots. We need a belt. Okay. We need a belt and the jewelry. 
Uh, chisels also are decent currency for buying stuff. Okay. I wonder, is there like a way to, is there a way to, um, like, repeat action? There we go. Shift click it. I don't, that didn't do anything. That didn't do anything. I thought maybe if you increase it, it, it ups the value on it. Whatever. All right, I'm just going to do... See, that that increased the physical damage on it. Is it because it's un unidentified that it just, like, it makes it better before you roll it? It's kind of weird that, like, you can't just do that after the fact to make the values better on other stuff. Come on, you know you want to give me the three link blues. There we go. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So that's no no dice on that one. Um, I mean, I could, I could just like wait until I have some chaos orbs and then like try to roll it into what I want. It might take a while, but I think that's, it's high enough quality that it might be worth it. To like just hang on to one and just try to get something out of it. Either that or else look for something on the trade that's got spell damage and lightning damage to spells. Or just lightning damage, like any of any of those modifiers. But I think I think if I was going to look on the trade, I would try to find something that had the crit chance because that 79% increased critical strike chance for spells is just insane. That's insane. So, yeah, I mean, we took a shot at it. 28% is not bad, though. But I might be able to find higher. Um, it was cool that we got that upgrade, though. That's nice. Yeah, so now we're up to 1687. And then that's going to almost double. Um, all right, we got to sell that stuff. There it is. There's the alchemy shards again. Like, why does it just randomly give you the alchemy shard? Is it because of the level? It might be because of the level of the gear. If I sell something that's actually, like, above that item level 60. I mean, I could... I have 35 orbs a chance. I could try to I could try to buy some just like common bases and just like orb a chance, orb a chance, orb a chance, orb a chance and just roll all, all of them and see if I get something out of that and didn't think to do that yet yeah. 
Say like something like this, 30% increased spell damage with 8% increased lightning damage. The 8% increased lightning damage is probably worth more than just the flat increase. So if I start it with something like that, and then just try to like roll it up into a rare, like, um, like do an orb of augmentation on it and try to get like a third modifier that's halfway decent and then just regal it and turn it into a rare, it'd probably end up being something pretty good. It has potential. I don't know if he can actually do that though, because it's since it's got one suffix already on it. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. Eight percent increased lightning, and then five to ninety, right there. That's already two thirds of what we need. So then we just either need an insane amount of cast speed, or the crit strike chance. But I would think that like. If you have enough modifiers, it would just roll into a certain item. That you that it would just like give you like a certain like you can lead it down the path and it would just end up at one destination. Is that it though? Is that like really? How is that a rare? Like, shouldn't I have more shit on it? I mean, because what I have is like six to a hundred and thirteen. Six to 113 lightning damage. But when you consider that my 16,000 base damage, how much of that is, I mean, 329 to 6,392 lightning damage. That's, that's what the skill is. So the actual like lightning damage base that gets added on is very small, but just extra percentage lightning damage. 8% of 6,000 is a lot more than 100 damage. So, I don't know. But the, what makes it up, what makes up for it is that crit strike chance. So, it's just I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't, uh, supported skills have added lightning damage. Yeah, so this has like, it says Frost Blink. So Frost Blink would be affected by that, but these shouldn't. I mean, it is, a, it's, it goes down by 4,000 taking that off, probably because of just like the generic spell damage. So that affects that by 4,000, but okay. So this, this by itself is worth 1,600 extra damage. It's not bad. It's just like, you know, 4,000. 4,000 because of that crit. If this had the crit on top of it, it'd probably be pretty close to an upgrade. The fact that it adds more fire damage to spells, like, I'm just wondering, like, could, could you get three of lightnings? Or just, like, a better modifier than 10 to 19 fire damage? Because that's just, that's hot garbage. That's where it went wrong. I could scour it. Because that, cause that 30% that increased spell damage base is, like, probably a max roll. And the 8% increased lightning damage is not bad. Let me see what happens when you do this. Does it... Yeah, it does take it off. Fuck. So it started... 
it started with that as a magic item. The extra magic item was the 8% lightning. Okay. Why, well, I could do it again. I do that. And then uh, re-roll it until I get something good. Thirteen percent increase line. So I got an even better one, and then fire damage to spells. Oof. 24% increased physical. Damn. Damn. Alright, let's try it one more time. Uh, oops, wrong one. It's hard to keep track of what all these do. 10%? Okay, we'll go with that. Terrible. It's right there, 43%. No, it's still lower. The, the amount of swing between the stat numbers is ridiculous. Like, the value of the modifiers are just bad. Why Why they let it go to, like, randomly just be, like, in the toilet, I don't understand. Like, every modifier you get should be decent. There we go, 61% increased spell, 40 mana, ten the ignite is garbage, but... Okay, can't do anything with that. Alright, one more time. 61% uh, increased spell damage, so that's a lot. Fourteen thousand one hundred eighty. Yeah, it's just... Fuck. Where did that come from? Did I have that the whole time and didn't sell it? Supports aura skills that affect you and allies, increasing the aura's effect on allies before... Oh yeah, that's the garbage. That's garbage, we don't like that. I don't need that. Alright. Let's go level up. Go back into the desert and start... Try to get that 6% so we can put the shield on. Because I'm convinced right now that's the reason why I'm getting absolutely destroyed. It's because of the... Uh, it's because my armor is so low. Like, any hit just completely demolishes me. So... Increasing my defense by double is probably is probably going to be noticeably good. And why all of a sudden, like, I don't understand why, like, it... I get that I went into town, but when I come back out of town, I should still have these on. Unless it's because I died and I forgot to turn it back on after I died. I don't really remember. There we go. Ninety nine percent. No more level sixty nine. I thought the build was done. 
at level 69, but it's a sad day. We gotta leave it behind. Also kind of sucks because I, I do remember that there was that loot pile that had the belt in it. I should have taken the belt. I forgot. There we go. Alright, first things first. Gotta do that immediately. So let's see what our... Our armor's at 3245. Up from 1400. Or 1600. So, significant defense increase. Why it just put me on the micro oh, Probably I hit it in my accent. It's my bad. I was like, why did why did why is it doing that? Fat fingered. Uh, armor, cold and lightning. That's not bad. Cause this only has the lightning. Oh, this one's got 84% increased armor and energy. Just, so that one, that's what makes that so good. Yeah. I mean, there's armors that have like a lot more armor value on them. I can get, I can get one that's got like 1,200 armor on it, but the percentage is good when you actually have a fair amount of it to begin with. Defeat the mummies. Sixty four percent increased armor. That's a lot. Cold resist. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what that looks like. So I got to forty one fifty one. What the fuck? The slower, the slowed movement is a little bit 
annoying. The move speed debuff from the, uh, I don't know, is it the shield? Yeah, 5% decreased move speed, but it feels like a lot more than 5%. The fuck is that? Six second cooldown, that feels like a lifetime. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm gonna be I might just farm this area. Like look at we're already twenty eight percent through the experience bar. That's crazy. That's like I'm farming the shit out of this place. All right. Um, all right. So the th the main thing here is that if I if I do change out this, or if I change out my chest piece, I absolutely have to. Oh wow, my fire resist went in the toilet. I have to. Uh, I have to put fire resist back on my armors. So fire resist on that, or fire and lightning resist. I mean, I think the 40% Chaos is actually pretty good. It's more than I've ever had on a build this late in the campaign. This is where the Basilisk is, I'm assuming. Seems like a very Basilisk area to be. I mean, I'm still taking damage, but it's definitely better than it was, where it was like, oh my god, I got hit one time, I'm gonna die.
an angry chicken. Sorry. Didn't I take that one skill or something? I'm like when I kill, I kill shit with a uh, frost blank that it has a chance to drop a better loot. Gotta remember that. Go ahead and zap them, then teleport. Instead of the other way around. Uh, I don't want any of this. Why, why are you giving me this? Ooh, I kind of want that, though. This this might be... Good? I don't know. Alright. All right, this thing. Twenty to twenty nine. Okay, forty five and below. Got it. I mean, 36%, that's a pretty good start. It's a pretty good start. Oh! I guess the, uh... The rings don't matter because they don't really roll in terms of um, item level. Like, you can get a really good ring that's like just requires level 35, doesn't really have. Anyway, uh, this did not roll very well. I have one regal orb left, so we'll try. Hey. Thirty one increased spell damage and thirty eight lightning resist. I don't really like resistance on my weapons, but Really, all, all that we need is, with with these spell damage modifiers, really all we need is the crit thing. That's what we need. But that's a pretty decent... Pretty decent one to take a shot on. Cast speed? That's not bad. That's not bad. Just massive amount of spell damage and cast speed? I mean, how much faster can my casting get? It is pretty close. Just like the massive amount of spell damage on that. That's pretty damn close.
Let's see if I can... Oh wait, they were linked, fuck. Uh... Let me just transfer these over and see what that looks like. 18883. Nah, no, it's still higher. It's close. It was close. We really just needed that resistance. If that resistance had been any other kind of damage on it, it, it would have been good. But, but, let me look. Let me look quick. Right now my lightning resist is 59. So if I was willing to take a thousand hit and thousand hit on my DPS, I could get my lightning resist back up to max, like way above max. And um it would be consistently higher damage because I wouldn't be relying on the spell crit in order to do damage, I would just have higher base damage. So I wouldn't have to be relying on the rolls to cast, like every time I cast a spell, what the extra damage was going to be, the extra modifier roll. It would just be more flat damage. Straight up. Let me look at my... Let me look at my stuff here. Why doesn't it show critical? I don't understand that. Why did why does it not show your like chance to crit? Shock of effect was eighty percent. Just that's like just brain dead to me. Like how the fuck how the fuck are you not going to, like, have... Oh, wait, okay. Wait a minute, hold on. This is what we need to look at. Well, actually, let me, let me, let me do a... Uh, where's Spark? Let me do Spark, because Spark is the kind of main attack that I do. So, Spell Lightning Damage, Cast Speed Modifier, Spell Critical Strike Chance is 15%, Crit Multiplier is 200%. So then that goes up to 168 on the cast speed, and I get an additional 5%. Wow, really? That's 79% increased critical strike chance for spells only makes that go up by 5%. Wow, that's crazy. That just gives it straight up more damage. It does the same thing to the cast speed modifier, roughly. I, I get 4% less on the cast speed. But I gain 1,000 DPS. I went on 76.34. It's the same. It's the same. The only difference is that this gives me 5% extra crit. So, like, really, these are, like, equivalent to each other. Except this one has resistance on it, and this one has the crit. So I give up... I can give up 5% crit, 5% crit chance in exchange for maxing out my lightning resist. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. 16% lightning resist in exchange for 5% crit chance. You know, I think considering what my damage is right now, and that it's essentially, it would essentially be the same. If 
Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, the the more damage you have, the more you're gonna notice that. But nineteen eight ninety. Nineteen eight ninety. It's a thousand DPS. So I give up a thousand DPS for sixteen thousand DPS in exchange for sixteen percent lightning damage reduction. So it's 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 five percent it's five percent damage in exchange for fifteen percent lightning resist. Basically. That's what the math comes out to. Um and I don't I don't I don't necessarily I mean the the, the critical Let's look at um let's look at Voltaxic Burst. I mean the critical strike multiplier though is is two hundred percent, so it'd be three times damage on a crit. That's where that's where the difference comes into play. Like this is technically equivalent. But it's not just the crit chance. When you give up five percent crit, you're also giving up 5% chance to do 3 times your damage so I think I've said it before but if you have a critical strike chance that's over 20% that's pretty good like 25 is like peak like what you're aiming for 30% is really good but, but if you I mean I got 21% that's pretty solid that's why this thing has been so good for like once it, when I got this. That, I mean, I don't remember what level I was when I got this, but it's carried me through the whole game just because the modifiers on it are so fucking good. It doesn't matter what the base stats are; it's just the combination of all those modifiers makes it too good to give up. I mean, the fact that I've got I'm looking at. 67% increased spell damage, and it's not as good as this because this has the extra critical strike chance. Because that 5% on top of, you know, a decent amount of basic spell damage. And 16% increased cast speed is pretty good, too. And I get the 43% increased monitor generation rate. I don't know. I don't understand why this like only comes with four modifiers, and this thing's got like eight modifiers on it. I don't understand like why one rolls like that and the other one doesn't. It's just that's just weird to me, especially when this is a much higher level item. I mean, this just by itself requires level fifty nine. This is sixty four with the gems in. I just I, I don't I don't understand that. The only other thing I can do to this to try to make it better is to enchant it. That's the only thing I can do to it. The fuck is that? Oh. So you need that to get past... Uh... Yeah, we're gonna take this. We're gonna take this to base and see if I can put another modifier on it and see if that makes a difference. I mean, there should be. I kind of feel like there should be a crit chance in chant that you get during the course of playthrough, even if it's not as good as this one. There should be like increased critical strike chance.
increase calf speed. So these are all armor ones, undiscovered. Let me look. Like every modifier should be an enchantment in the game, unless it's some kind of like legendary or a unique effect. Checked out Pierce, physical damage, move speed. Lightning and Chaos Resist. I'm not saying any... I'm not saying any crit... There we go. Critical... Critical Strike Multiplier. Critical Strike Chance Strength and Intelligence Rank 2. Critical... Critical chance and elemental damage on critical strike. So there are there are a few critical. These are all defensive ones. Attack and cast speed. Added damage. Unveiling. Is the veiled thing um, part of that betrayal? Because in that description I talked about veiled items. So I guess like unveiling these items can give you enchantments when you do that league mechanic. Criticals. Rank 1, 2, 3. Attack and spell block. Attack and cast speed. I don't know. These are kind of like... They're weird. Let's just throw this in here and see. Not only that, but this has the mono regeneration rate, which is important. So not only does it have the crit thing, it has the, the mono regeneration rate, which is... So I can I can do that. I can I can put twenty to thirty percent on. Or I could just do the lightning damage. I just wish that there was some kind of like low level critical cuz even if it was only like considering that 79% only translated to 5% I don't understand what this modifier is like I like I don't understand how when it says 80% increased critical strike chance I know that it doesn't literally mean increase it by 80% but it would be nice if I mean, maybe it does. Maybe it's like the sum total of all of your increased critical strike chance percentages added together, and then that gets multiplied by whatever base amount that you have. But it would be nice if there was a way that you could just increase your base critical strike chance without having to do the percentage modifier. You know, if it just said, like, add 5% crit chance. I mean, I think that's what the critical things are. When it says, like, just add, you know, critical strike chance. Not critical strike chance for spells, but just add critical, you know. And that's global and accounts for everything. That 5% of that, or just, you know, increase critical chance by 5. Just increasing it by 5 means more than percentage in that case. But... <sighs> I don't know. I just feel like... Like, do I want to give up my criticals for 
defense, and I I don't think I do. I I just I don't think I do. I think I think it, it, we got closer than we've ever gotten to getting an upgrade for the weapon, and still didn't work out. So I think I need to be like level ninety and get some kind of crazy level ninety tier thirteen wand or something that's got 757 increased spell damage percentage on it or like some fucking crazy high number some number that's so absurdly high that when i put it on my dps just like quadruples something like that if i got something like that then i upgrade but where i get another wand that has spell critical strike chance on it and then try to get all the other crap because it wasn't too hard to get an item that had another spell chance and some lightning on it or some sp cast speed or whatever it wasn't too hard to get a halfway decent item it just needs to start with that good modifier either a high crit increased spell damage or it has to come with the crit chance if it doesn't have either one of those i can't do anything with it but we can do something with these so we throw that in the thing have a peek apparently i can't upgrade this with anything because i don't have any currencies So these are all the ones that I can do. If I had, um, I mean, I probably would just do one of these, right? Just do more armor and energy shield on one of them. And then on the other one, I do the fire resist. Cause that's 29 to 35%. But I need fucking <laughs> chaos orbs. Fucking chaos orbs, man. Chaos orbs and alchemy orbs, which I don't have. Yeah, so probably on this one, I would do the same thing that I have... That I did with the shield. I'd probably put like the 45% armor and energy shield on the chest piece. Because that's that has the high value on it. It just makes sense to have it there. And then on something crappy like a helmet. Which doesn't really have much in the way of defense. It's like not really. That would just go ahead and put the resistance on that. That would make more sense to me. So if I look at looking at my defenses. If I look at my defenses then I need... I need 16 on the lightning, and I mean, if a good a good max roll would get me back into the 60s on that. So I mean, the lightning can kind of stay where it is. I'm not really concerned about that. So we need another one. We need another one of those increased armor and energy shields. Because the resistance is, I don't care that much about them, but I I would like them in least, at least in around sixty, around sixty I think is good, good enough. Um, that's twenty one. Actually, wait a minute, hold on. I have, I can just re. Redo the ring. Oh, yeah, I could just redo the ring. So I have extra... I have extra cold resist, so I could just take that away. And do just fire and lightning. If I do fire and lightning on the ring, 15%, good. All right, so now we need, oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, that's perfect. So I just need to put fire resist on one of these things. And even, even a mid roll would be good. Uh, let me look. Yeah, minimum's 29, so. Again, chaos orbs. Fuck. But at least now we know. Get the chaos orbs and then I can fix my resistances by doing fire on that one and then 
doing another armor increase on the chest piece. Works for me. Are these guys just waiting to kill me here? What the fuck? Alright. Put my buffs back on. Uh, can you excuse me? Excuse me for a second. Jesus Christ. Uh, all right, got buffs back on, got our golems up. Oh shit. Got the shadow realm. Let's go. Let me pop one of these so I can just move around quicker. Oh, I love it when they jump right on me when I have Voltaxa first up. It's so nice. Let's go! Kill the fucking unique and while we're inside the shadow realm. Let's go. Feed me more. I need more murder. Damn it. Oh, hit a dead end here. Interesting. We got a bunch of weird shards. Chaos shards? Horizon shards? What the fuck? Fine. Ooh! 19 chaos resist. What does this one have? Nah. Uh, damn it. Yeah, that's a dookie one anyway. Don't... I should have kept it. I should have kept it and not rolled on it. It's still like 19%. I had better. But you never know. Sometimes you get the double. Sometimes you get the double chaos roll on it. So I guess it was worth it just to see. All right, so. Let's go turn that in. What the way? What the fuck? Why is it like all dark and bloody here all of a sudden? What the fuck happened? Ah. Uh, that's a doo doo reward. Now I gotta figure out what to do with all these weird. Shards I picked up. Engineer shards? I don't remember what an engineer orb does. I guess I'll just put it over here with these things, because these are like weird weird ones. Uh, binding shards. I think we have orbs of binding. Where are they at? Right there. Okay. Chaos shards. Horizon shards. Don't know what that is. So we'll just put that there. Do 
Do I want to hang on to this just in case I can? You know, if I get, if I do get some chaos orbs, I might be able to re-roll it and get it. I think it's I don't know. I think it's easier to just build uh, to do what I was doing, where you like just scour it, roll a decent modifier on it, add another decent modifier on it, and then regal it and try to and hope that the last thing that you get on it is good. I think that's easier than just constantly chaos orbing items over and over again, hoping that you're going to get a roll where all the modifiers are good. I think it's a lot harder to do that. But 67% is so fucking good. It just, like, I, mm, it bothers me. It just bothers me that I can't get spell crit chance to roll on anything. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm tired of looking at them. I'd rather have a scroll fragment instead of look, looking at a wand and trying to will it into existence to be what I want it to be. Okay. So, we've got to go come back to Foothills. We've got to find the other thing. I have no idea where to go. That's the Boiling Lake, so we don't need to go there. I guess we go south. There's two more exits in this place. I think if I go bottom right, it's going to lead me to progression. So maybe we'll try, like, bottom left. See where that goes. Well, there's definitely an instance exit. Let's see where this one goes. So we're back in the desert. Maybe this is where I need it to go. Let's go in the Shadow Realm. Alright, we're going to ignore all the items. We're not going to try to pick anything up. We're just going to kill shit and keep moving. Looking for more mobs. Constantly looking for more mobs. Got to keep murdering. Got to keep that kill count up. Otherwise, our timer goes in the toilet. And then we don't get anything good. Oh, no, come on now. Don't be giving me shit like this to do while I'm in the Shadow Realm. That's bullshit, man. You can't be... They can't be throwing main game shit at you while you're in Shadow Realm. That's not cool. I don't want to be doing fucking League mechanics and main game storyline while I'm in the Shadow Realm. Because they spawn in these fucking rare guys that, like, pick you off from across the map. It's bullshit. Okay, I've got more rings for the box. I guess I try to retrace my steps and pick up any uh, currencies that dropped. Take them. I guess I'll... I don't know, I guess I'll do this. Fuck it. Uh... 
Let me get a look around and see where the remnants are. That one's off in no man's land. We got a chest there. All right. I think I know how we got to do this. Uh, shut up. Yeah, not gonna go that far. Can I get like? I think I got both of those with the first one. Maybe I'll just do the two. So I really don't care. Yeah, I just I don't care. I never get anything good for doing these. Whoa. A stack deck. <sighs> Map. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not blown away by that. Stack of unknown divination cards. Fuck it. Put them in the box. All right, uh, do I want to use this? Oh, I guess he... So you need six of those and you get a corrupted map? Oh my god. There's got to be like a thousand of these cards in the game. Why would anybody want corrupted shit, honestly? Uh... Oh, what was that? I mean, this is all stuff for the box. I might as well just go put it. Yeah, the desert. All right, so I needed I needed this for for that. I need to figure out how to get the fuck over there. I wish that. I, oh my god! Like it. It just <sighs> this game fucking irritates me because I feel like the campaign, everything should just be oriented the same way. Like, even if the instance resets and you have to fight everything over again, it should always be oriented the same way so you know the way out. Like, if you play the game enough times, you know, like, okay, when I get into this way, I come in from this side and I leave through that side, and there's there's a fork to the left, and, I, and you're like, it's, it's all straight in your head. Because when I look at this, I think, okay, if I go to the desert, that means if I go straight up, I'm going to end up f into the foothills. And that's not how it is. You can go into the desert and go all the way into the bottom left, and that's how you get into the foothills. So then you have to think, okay, well, down is up and up is down. So then if I if I go down, I go up. And then from there, then it's not to the left, it's to the right, because everything's inverted. So it's like it's way too fucking confusing that way. It's, not, it's too confusing. I don't like it. I don't like it. I wouldn't care if it was like, all right, well, you come in this way, and then, you know, the next time you come in, it's like facing this way. Like, if it was like a little bit to the right and then a little bit up, if it's still more or less the same way, I wouldn't care if it was like that, but not when it's like completely flip-flop sideways and upside down. Makes no fucking sense. Ge geographically, it just doesn't make any sense. When you're looking at a map and something's to the north, you're going to go to the north, and if that's not the way out, then it's fucking stupid. Then the map's worthless.
Uh, okay, we don't need anything there, so this is going to be like set number two. So we'll just let me shift everything over. We already have our two rings for that one. And we got an extra ring. So I got all kinds of rings. So we're going to need two spaces there. I don't really like to do it this way. Keep that there. Well, I'm going to have to go like that because it's not going to work otherwise. Ring, ring. Alright. Still need a belt and a talisman. Or an amulet there. Belt and amulet. Over here we need weapon, gloves. This is too much of a hassle. I hate this shit. I really do. The fact that like they don't tell you that like selling full sets of armor can give you good currencies. Okay, corrupted. I don't know why I keep getting I get the same map over and over again. Okay, these two are the same. And then I got an extra one. I guess... I don't know. There might be small differences. Um, no. You know what? I'll probably just leave these alone. Because I haven't fucked with maps enough to know whether or not I want to like try to turn them into magic maps or whatever the fuck you're supposed to do with them. I hate how every time I go back to town, I have to like reapply my buffs and then resummon my golem. Like, why can't it just sa save your state for battle arenas? Like, like, all right, you go into town, all your shit's disabled. But once you go back in, it just automatically like reapplies the status that you were in when you when you left. Uh, okay. Hold on there, Chief. Not that you can hear me. Uh, where, where are you at? So... Was it bone chill support? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oops, my bad. My bad, buddy. Uh, you're wrong. Oh, there we go. We got a chaos orb. So now I can try to fuck around with that. What were the enchantments? The enchantments were like three. Uh, ah, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. So I haven't decided if I want to try to enchant my stuff or just buy another piece of gear.
Definitely can't give up the mono regen, that's for sure. Not when I'm crippled. In fact, I might need to look at maybe getting some more mono regen. I'm going to have to go looking for some rest stops on the highway that have some easy to get mono regen, like two or three points. That should fix the issue. Ooh. Yeah, just take that. It's a two-hander. At least I... Yeah, it should count as a two-hander. As a bow. Unless when they say two-hander, they mean like literally like a fucking sword or a warhammer or some shit like that. It'd be stupid. So hopefully the bow counts. I mean, it's not great. Let's just do that. Yep. I mean, it's not hard getting two spell damages. It's not hard getting spell damage and lightning percentage. But the spell crit thing, it seems like that's a one, one in a million modifier. It's kind of crazy. I mean, because in, in one aspect of it, it's really cool that I got a weapon that's lasted me pretty much the entire campaign. On the other hand, though, it's really boring when you never get an upgrade for your gear. Like, every time you get something, you're like, oh, that looks pretty good. I'll roll on it. Oh, it's shitty. All right. Whatever. That's what I miss about Diablo. I felt like in Diablo, like, every five minutes you were getting an upgrade. Even if it wasn't a great upgrade, it was still... Like, you always felt like you were getting something to improve. Even if it was just a little bit. I don't think it would devalue the game at all if they, like, increased the drop chance of Chaos Orbs. Or, or had a different set of drop drop percentages for the campaign than when you're doing everything else. Like maybe when you're doing end game content, they can have it be a little bit more rare. So that way it means more when you find stuff. But for the campaign, like it, they should like you should be fairly consistently getting all the orbs that you need to just make your own gear if you're not going to get any good drops. Really, like, strongly disagree with with the implication that you're just supposed to, like, rely on trade. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just buy the stuff that I need. If the game won't give it to me, then what's the point of playing it?
Like, I don't mind making my own stuff. It's just the fact that, like, I can't, I can't even get the, the, the orbs. Like, give me the fucking orbs. You know? Have it be, like, if you need X, you know, if you need all the magic orbs, you just go back and, like, kill everything in Acts 1 through 4. And then if you need, like, alchemy orbs and chaos orbs and all, so you just, then you play the second half of the camp. You just go back and run through a map and you'll get, like, two or three of them and then that's it. Like, a little bit of grinding. Just a little bit. A little bit of farming. You're not going to get any experience out of it because you're going to be, like, so over-leveled at that point. It won't matter, but... And none of the none of the gear is going to be any good because you're going to be over leveled for that too. But at the very least, for the currencies, like they should have some way for you to easily easily get it in the campaign somewhere. Like go replay Act Nine, and you will get constant chaos orb drops. Like that's I don't understand why they don't do it that way. It's bullshit. Because it seems like the only way that you can get these fucking things is by doing the shitty league, and the shitty league is shitty. It's like the last thing I want to do is to go fucking do league arena matches. Goddamn terrible. Alright, bro. You, like, hit way too hard. What is your deal? What is your deal? What is this? Why, why are you getting like all these dead, dead slotted items? What is that? What is that supposed to mean? Like, what the fuck? Unless they're like the any color. They might be the any color. Never mind. If they're the any color ones, then, then that's good. I forgot that they have those. Uh, what did I pick up? I needed a weapon. What else did I need? Gloves? Did I need boots for that other set? I'll just take them. This is really starting to feel like glass cannon build. Which is kind of weird, because two levels ago... Like, right at the start of stream, when I put the shield on... And got all that armor, it felt like I was good. Like, stuff wasn't killing me in two hits, and now all of a sudden... Two areas later, and two levels later, it's like right back to... Almost being killed every time I get hit. I should probably look for good gems, too. Or not gems, good jewels. Because the jewels that I have suck. Well, the one that I... One that I just put in that has the Chaos Resistance nodes on it. That one's not bad. But at the very least, I could probably go look for like a good basic jewel. In case I pick up the basic jewel slot. I'll use the uh, the half decent medium one that I have. I don't even remember what's on it, but it's not completely terrible. All right, this is my favorite. I love getting the lightning buff when I'm already lightning lady. I could do all the lightning. And then I get even more lightning on top of my lightning. It's the best. It's my favorite feeling. I'm not even going to entertain that.
Damn it. Let's get lost in this place. Uh, there might be a way forward over here. Maybe where those guys were? Is there like a... Okay. Holy shit. Forgot about those. Gotta be careful. They probably hurt like a motherfucker too. It's the last thing I need. Die to lightning when I'm supposed to be the lightning master. All right, General Anus, let's do this. Woohoo! Uh, gauntlets. Okay, so we got the second main quest thing. I guess the wait, all right. Aren't you in here somewhere? Now oh, you're back in area. What the fuck? Clear the sandstorm. Oh, okay. That's all right. So that's optional. This is the optional thing. That's progression. Fuck. I don't know if I. Did I find a waypoint in this area? I really hate this map shit, where it's like you can't tell where the where the things are by just looking at it. Like I can tell this is open area, but but I can't find the way out of the room, and it's like right here. How am I supposed to know that? Um. Uh, not superior and there's no no quality upgrade on it. It's worth nothing. So if this is a dead end and there's no way to go through there, that means I have to go all the way back and out through this way and around and back this way and then out through here and then back through here and then through here and then through here and then through here and then all the way back up and that's the way out. So then I have to go all the way to the left and all the way up. Like, I fucking hate this map design. It sucks ass. Like, just certain areas. Certain areas are fucking miserable. I don't enjoy them. Unless I'm like supposed to, maybe it's maybe maybe that's not the maybe there is no way out from there. Do 
Yeah, what the fuck? What? Yeah, alright, that's isolated area. There is no way out. Well, that's good. At least I got tired of being in there and left, and that's okay. Because I was supposed to do that. I gotta sell that stuff so I don't forget. Okay, well, I already had the boots. So just put them down there for now. But we needed the weapon. I guess to deposit all the currency. Superior plateau map, that could be good. Item quantity 13, quality 13. <sighs> More corrupted cards. One of seven it's currency. One of seven for three, and you need eight of these just for one. How does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense at all. All right, so we gotta go back to Quarry, save Oyun. And Duder's also here. Maybe I should go do the other one first. Yeah, you know what? Let's go do that one. Let's go do the desert one first, so I don't forget. It'll be easy to find the impassable desert part. Because it will be impassable. It'll be fairly noticeable, like, oh, I can't go any farther. This must be the place where I use the item. Man, is that it? I thought maybe I'd get an item for doing that again. A different item, not quest item. You're my wonder wall. Had to. Hmm. Forbidden Vault. This is a very short area. Very short transition area. <laughs> the Dusty Pits. Code name for her vagina. Also called the Forbidden Vault. No one's ever been in there. It's never been cleaned. Yeah, whatever. I don't really care. Um, I didn't pick up any items for you to unveil, so that's a thing. Uh, 
When do we start getting like w like big dick flasks that heal for like five thousand? Because I feel like that's what I need right now. Even though I only have two thousand life, I feel like I need five thousand health when I hit a potion. Can we, can we go in there? We invest the, We did, we got two guys. Wait, what is this? Okay, you interrogate people that you kill to gain intelligence about their safe house. When the bar hits 100, raid that safe house. The relationships of members in an encounter affect your available options. Sergeant. Okay, you're the sergeant. Higher rank members are more rewarding, but more dangerous. Well, what about this guy? He's just, he's a war master. Where's that rank? Is that like below a sergeant? Items confer special abilities and make the fights more difficult. That doesn't explain anything about this mechanic. Literally doesn't explain anything. So what the fuck was the point of coming here if you can't do anything? Like, this is the shit that bothers me. Like, when you do heist, they give you a, a trial heist. They give you, like, a, a tutorial heist. So you can understand what the mechanic, how the mechanic works. And then if you fuck it up, you get to try it again. They give you another one until you get it right. None of the other leagues do that. They don't give you, like, a starter one that says, like, okay, this is what you do. And then this is what you get for completing it. And then these are the rewards that you get using this currency. And all, like you just have to figure it out all, all by yourself. They don't. They don't have any halfway decent in-game tutorials for any of the league mechanics. Which is probably why Heist is the only thing that I like because it's simple. It's easy to understand. They actually gave you kind of a like a little crash course in how it works. He let you try it a couple times. Everything else is like, here it is, and then you fuck it up, and you don't learn anything from it. You don't get anything from it, even when you succeed. It's just like, oh, here's some useless currency. Now you have to do this 10,000 more times, and then maybe you'll get an item. Well, by the time you get that item, you're already going to be over-leveled for it. Oh, wow. Lots of silver coins are dropping. I used to get excited for those because it meant I could get a fucking prophecy or whatever and then go kill a rare guy and actually get some good drops that was fun now I see silver coin I'm just like oh my god please please don't give me any more because I'm going to feel compelled to use them and then I'll want to kill myself Give you the extra special charge. I feel like my cast speed went down. How did my cast speed go down? I used to be able to get like 15 of those loaded up. Now I can only do 13. I must have ran out of... Maybe I ran out of mana. That's a nice drop. Why can't we get some more of that shit? Every time I kill a rare, I should get like a guaranteed... Alchemy Orb, Regal Orb, Chaos Orb. Like, it should be a guaranteed 
currency drop every single time you killed a late enemy. Even if it's random. Because even if even on a random chance, you're going to end up getting a fair number of them. And I know what everybody was gonna, is going to tell me. They're going to see that and they're going to be like, Stop complaining about the currency, because once you get through the campaign and start doing maps, they're gonna you're going to get like 50 of them. Well, yeah, but I don't need 50 of them five hours from now. I need 50 of them right now. I need them now. I don't need them some nebulous point in the future. Ooh. See how quick I can kill you. Where'd it go? Why am I just like constantly losing health? I didn't get hit by anything. Oh, is this way? Is this the one where you have to like chase it through like three areas? It just keeps like going. And then once you once you get through the bullshit, then there's another battle arena and you fight it some more and then chase it again. <sighs> Can't we just like skip to the part where I kill it, please? Because this. This is uh, obnoxious. And there's quicksand. Let me through. Holy shit. As soon as that thing popped up and my Voltaxic burst started going, the, the health bar just went... It's pretty funny. I'm assuming this is... Yeah, okay. I was trying to figure out like why we were supposed to do all this. Uh, so what are you? You're a minor god? Which one were you? This one? Five percent reduced chaos damage taken. Twenty-five percent reduced chaos damage over time while on caustic ground. Capture avatar of undoing. Yeah, I'm starting to worry less about being frozen because that's a subtype of an elemental damage, whereas this is. An actual whole damage type that I need to worry about. You know. Then again, I don't have any stun and block recovery. And why the fuck is the quicksand like trying to swallow me up? Bro, why are you like, help, help me out here? I'm your friend. Look, I'm, I'm getting swallowed. Look, I'm dying. Why aren't you helping me? What a dick. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Give me that point. Alright. Do I want... Do I want the other one or not? Because the minion thing we don't care about. We only we only I only use this large cluster jewel because it had the chaos resist nodes on it. It's the only reason. 
But I got that. I got one medium socket. I think I think that's really all I need out of that. If I desperately need uh, more, I could just pick up the other two nodes. But we got a lightning mastery right here, so I could do that. Boom, boom, boom. So that's four points. Um, where was the other one at back here? So the 15% maximum effect of shock is good. I'd probably pick that up and then maybe shocks spread to other enemies within one meter. But I also have the golem that's inflicting shock, and I think if it's already if something's already inflicted with shock, you can't like overwrite shock it. So I'm wondering if it would be worth it to um, pick up a third. Maybe I just stick with the two. I mean, the extra critical strike chance against enemies with lightning exposure seems good because we already know what. But that crit chance is, I mean, 60% actual value is probably only going to be like 3%, but still it's 3%. So maybe... I guess it doesn't really matter which one I do. Um, I search like mana. Go back to the beginning. Did I pick this up? No. I need... I know there's like one somewhere early on. Reservation Master me? Maybe this is what I need. Eight percent increased damage for each of my aura or herald skills. So that would work on wrath, I think. But I'm not using heralds, though. That's the problem. Tempest Shield and Wrath. Yeah, I don't think... Hold on. Yeah, neither one of those. I mean, they count as auras, but they don't... They don't count as... Um, anything else, so... Uh, Did I not wait, did I not take that? Six percent chance to block spell damage and one percent increased mono regen per one percent chance to block spell damage. That's not bad. Did I not take that? Wow. That's like such a no brainer. Why didn't I pick that up? And I didn't take the mastery? What the fuck was I doing? I was probably worried about this because it gave me the extra spell damage and then moved on because I didn't want to spend all my points and then not be able to get all the shit that was up top here. Yeah. I could do 10% damage take and recoup this mana. That sounds pretty good. Or I could do reduced mana cost of skills. What, are the, what do these cost? 29? So that would cut it down by 3. Reduced mana cost, though, compared to how much damage I take. I mean, if I get hit, I get all my mana back. Immediately. But this gets cut down to, like, 20%, if that. So...
12% increased mana reservation efficiency, that could also work. Because that would significantly reduce the amount of points. Or it would resist the, uh, the, I mean, it's like 80, what the fuck is it? What's the percentage on it? 50%, I lose, yeah, I lose 80, 83%, oh my god. So I get 8% of that back, almost. What's eight percent? Eight percent of fourteen. It'd be like a hundred and like a hundred and three, maybe. Like I'd get a hundred mana back. That's not. That's not bad when you consider that it only costs me. It's like three extra casts. I get three extra casts before I run out of mana. Thirty percent increased maximum mana. Um yeah, okay, so So we have one right here. This is a good this is a good one. I think the four points would probably be enough. I want one, two, three. They're both the same on both sides. But I think I would only need one of them. One, two, three, and then either reduced cost of skills or increased mana reservation efficiency. So I could just get a larger chunk of my mana back and then I'd have more casts to be able to play with. Kind of hard to decide, but I think that's a that's a really easy one because even if I just even if I maxed out that entire thing, that would give me a significant boost. Because I already got all my damage shit for the most part. I do need to put a socket in there, and that's gonna add more passives. What do I have? What was the one that I was thinking about using? Um, that one has resistances. This one's life. Actually, both of these suck. Yeah, both of those suck. In fact, I, I'm like so disgusted by them that I think I'm going to sell them right now. Yes. Here, take these. I don't want them. Fine. I might have to look at the trade and see if I can get a decent one. I'm not worried about it right this second. But... I definitely don't want to waste another jewel thing. So, all right, let me. Like, what level am I? I'm like level what seventy one, going on seventy two. So I only have about. I mean, if I'm lucky, I'll get maybe another twenty points to spend. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think my game just crashed. It crashed. All right, so I need to think about what I want to do with my points going forward. I definitely do think I need to put a little bit into my mana because that's starting to become a concern where I'd like to just be able to load up a bunch of shit. And I'm I'm just, like running out, so. That's a concern. 
Not a big concern, because I just stop casting for like two seconds and then I get it all back. But ideally you don't want to... You ideally don't want to tap yourself out. So even if I just put a couple points in to like mana regen or something like that, it's probably sufficient. Um, all right, so what was I looking at? I think, I think this is a good one. This is just an, a good early cluster that I, I just went right past it because I wasn't worried about utility stuff at the moment. I wanted to get all my important health and resistances and block chance and all that good stuff taken care of. And then we went up this way and we got all of our good lightning damage skills. So Yeah, the way I f the way I figure it, I mean, you get 125 passive points, but most people don't even get all of them because they don't they don't make it to level 100. So if I figure level 90 and then I got all the extra passive, that would be like 115. Which considering that we're almost we're like almost at the end of the campaign, I think realistically, if I have 25 to 30 points left, that's being generous. But I think that's enough where I could spend a few. I could probably just, like, get this whole thing right here, and then my mana's taken care of. Even if I just got three of them, and then the mastery, I think that would be, you know, I could see how, see how it is, and if it seems good, then I don't have to do anything more with it. I could go back to picking up damage stuff. The other thing is, like, I'm not really sure... That's spell damage while dual wielding. Uh, actually, let me just do increase... So I don't see like any other good good things that are on the highway here. Like Like you would think wand mastery would be a no brainer, but this is more for like if you're doing a wand build that does like melee strikes or basic attacks. Like wand attacks fire an additional projectile. Well I'm not really I'm not I'm using a wand, but I'm not really using it to attack. I'm not doing, like, attack skills with it. And that's what this feels like. This feels like if you're actually using it, like, as a weapon and you're cast, like, doing attack skills or you're using, like, weird goofy shit like ailments or power charges and stuff like that. So we had the cold lightning fire... Now this could be good. I could come over and grab this one. Get Prism Weave. But this is Attack Speed, which isn't the same as Cast Speed. And Elemental Damage, but is that Elemental Damage Global, or is that Elemental Damage on, like, Wand Attacks? I think I have I went through this before where like I was like I'm not does the elemental damage apply globally to any elemental damage? I think it does. So even though the attack speed and the weapon penetration doesn't do anything for me, it's a pretty significant increase in um elemental damage. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The, the actual mastery itself seems pretty useless, but it would be worth it just to get these four points, six. So that's six. 
And then if I got this entire thing, that's another six. That's 12. After that, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to go. But I think... Uh, I think maybe just trying to get that would be a nice little bu a little buff. That would take care of the mana. I suppose I could look at like armor. I don't see any armor skills. Like, is there like really like no passives that do anything with? Increasing armor. What uh max health? Uh max. Uh, it probably says maximum health. What's actual like wordage on that? See, even this one, this one, th this is the melee tree, and this one even had 30% increased elemental damage, and I, I think that applied to my lightning skills. Increased maximum, oh, maximum, it's health life, maximum life, I don't know why I was thinking maximum health. Alright, so that's like another thing I can look at, see if there's... Twelve percent to all elemental resistances. Twenty-four percent. So that's another easy one to pick up right there. It's just one point. So if we did the other two things, that'd be twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I don't need the strength, but easy max life nodes. The mastery is kind of useless to me. But it's close enough that it gives me at least a little bit of benefit. And I learned the life mastery. So I could come down here, there's 15% right there. And then another 10, so that's 25 total. And then 30. So that's what... One, two, three, four, five. Two. So you figure another, here's another five. So it's 17 points. So I would take care of health, mana, and then more damage. I don't know. It's getting... It's getting down to the nitty gritty, I think, where... Short of, like... I mean, I don't really know. Like, there's... Once you get to the end here, this is where all the good shit's supposed to be. But it doesn't seem like there's any, like, really amazing... Mastery trees that you want to that I want to pick up, like nothing that's blowing me away. It just seems like an aggregate. It's an aggregate of all the things that you've picked up along the way. I mean, I'm sure the idea is to try to get as many as many masteries as possible. But I've got one here, one here. Um. I think they call them keystones, right? You want to pick up keystones. So I have like I have like the elemental mastery keystone. I have caster mastery keystone. I have lightning mastery keystone. So like if those are my keystones, you usually only get three or four of those on on the way. I've also picked this up. So here's another 
here's another mono mastery right here. That's so that's one point. That'd be like eighteen points. So if I did if I did this, took the extra point there, shoot over and get that one mastery just for the extra elemental damage. Pick that up for more elemental resistance and extra elemental damage. Shoot down here and pick up some life. Shoot down here and pick up some life. Like what else is there? What else is there to get? Minion. Minion style. I don't care about minions. We're not doing a minion build. The Herald buff, okay, we're not doing that. I don't see anything else that's like close. I could just take an armor mastery, get 100% increased armor from equipped boots and gloves. Or 20% chance to defend with 200% of armor. Like, just, just get some, like, decent tank utility. That's another one that we can look at. I'm not seeing anything else that's, like, super close by that's just pure, pure damage stuff that's going to interest me. This is the closest one. And we're running out of points too, so I mean it's it's I don't know. It's just taking what we can. I think that's where we're at. So I don't know. It's been three hours. I think I'm just gonna wrap up here and uh finish up finish up this area next time and then I've got enough coins to go fuck around in the thing. You know, now that I think about it, I probably should have kept that wand because I could have scoured it, had the one that had the 30% increased spell damage or 36 or whatever it was, and I could have just used this on it and got another big da uh, big spell damage modifier on it, but none of it matters. I, none of it's going to matter unless I get the crit strike chance on it. It has to have, it has to have decent spell damage and the crit strike chance, and then I can... I can enchant it to try to make up for the rest, but it's like, I, I might as well not even look at weapons. I just don't think I'm ever going to get anything that has as many good modifiers on it. But I can take care of the... Well, if I grab that one skill, I think that's going to pretty much fix any issues that I was having with Elemental resistances. So maybe I can just start looking at getting an upgrade. I do. I, th I think the chest piece needs to be upgraded. Because I've seen armors, like some unique armors that are fairly decent that have 1,200 or more armor on them. And all I would really need is to get, like, all resistance... And make sure that it has increased armor and energy shield. Those are really the only two things that are important for that. Just take any any four link with strength, either intelligence or strength and intelligence. Probably strength and intelligence because we we need to be able to get four blues, but it also has to have the high armor, and you only get that on strength pieces. So I'll have to look at the market and see if I can get something for one chaos orb. Otherwise, uh, 
we're fucked. And then if I can't get that, then I just keep what I have and just throw fire resist on the helmet or something like that and keep keep going from there. But all right, I'm going to wrap this one up. I will catch you all next time. See ya.